Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Rita Giganti and Linda Armstrong. Today is Friday, May the 8th, 2020, 4 p.m. New York time. And wherever you are in the world, thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And we're happy to be continuing our exploration over the last few weeks of a book that Rita dug up for us from 1939. I still can't get over the fact <laughs> that I had not heard of this book before. But it's called Working with the Law, 11 Truth Principles for Successful Living by Raymond Hollywell. And the last two weeks, we've done a total of four chapters, two chapters each week. So we've kind of got a pattern going on here. And I like the titles of this week's chapters, particularly the first one, The Law of Increase and The Law of Compensation. Law of Increase. I mean, that says abundance to me in big, bright capital letters. So I'm I'm really curious to find out what this is all about. Hang on. Okay. So kick us off. What's what's uh, going on with Chapter 5 in this book? Well, I guess I'll start it off. Um, I took a lot of notes, and I wanted to spend more time reviewing them before the show today, but I actually didn't get the time, but it'll all come back, I think, as we start talking. Sure. Because um, there's so m- – it's funny how there's so many little gems throughout this book as you're reading it, and yeah. new light bulbs go off. And sometimes it doesn't even make sense, but energetically it's speaking to us, I think, just by reading it. Mm -hmm. But it bypasses the mind is what I'm trying to say. You know, the energy just comes in. But my first note that I wrote here was about, it refers to the law of increase and the magical genie. I love that. Yeah. And it says magical genie enables us to use the law, God, because, you know, God is the law in this whole book. Right. uh, More clearly. And he goes into talking about, praise and how praise is complementary to faith so praise and and he gives examples too like when you give praise to a little kid they want to work harder for you Mm -hmm. right so when we give praise which could maybe even be said as gratitude but it's even more than that um we're we're allowing that energy to have to speak into the universe through that energy so that more of that magic can come through so that's like a really little summary of it um, I did highlight one part in here, and I don't remember why, but I'll read it because it's right <laughs> at the beginning when he's talking about praise and the genie. Um, but it says, in truth, we may never, in truth, we may not believe in fairies, but we know there is a principle equivalent to the magic lamp. Um, no, it is not something material that we can carry about and rub at will to find little genies do our bidding. It's an understanding which enables us to use the law more clearly. And in using it, we stimulate our good and bring about much for our pleasure and happiness that seems like magic or miracles. But then this understanding is the act of praising God, the law, for that which we desire and invariably the fulfillment of that desire is speeding up to almost magic proportion. So mm-hmm. this kind of ties into all the access consciousness stuff is like when you're always talking to the universe and you're asking questions, you're not trying to figure it out because God, the law of the universe knows better than you. Right. So you just ask these questions and allow the magic to come in. So that's like I, I can take that whole way teaching and totally put it into this magic genie thing with faith and praise mm-hmm. Um And like even my house needs some repair here and there. And so I'm just putting more and more love into it um, because sometimes things just magically come into place where, boom, that thing can be fixed or suddenly you find the time or you find the funds or uh, someone offers to do something. You never know how it can come. Right. Instead of getting locked into how you think. It should come or how can it come? I don't have this or right away it's the negative aspect of it. Yeah, and thinking you have to stick to a certain plan, why not allow the magic to inspire and so you can alter your plan? Keep if you know if if you're a person that has to write things down and you're so frustrated with trying to stick to the whole thing, well, why not allow the magic to come in and maybe rearrange some of those things, take some off the list for you? Um, I don't know. I think I feel like it just frees you up when you can look at the magic maybe in some of the ways that he's talking about here, and that's just the first thing he said. <laughs> Yeah, it's um for me, I'm very familiar with this piece because and and here's the difference, because coming from a, the background I came from growing up in my house, you praise Jesus 
for his so that he would like it. That's mm-hmm. how they put it to us. Right. This was you're not praising him for yourself. But in the book, it teaches you different. It teaches, you no, the praise is for you to lift your energy up so that you can connect to God. Not that God could care less if you praised him or not. He doesn't need your praise. What he needs is for you to connect to him. And by praising, by, you know, either with song, chanting, um, whatever it is, you know, like I'll run around just affirmations, chanting them, you know. Um, and, and <clears throat> thanking and, and all kinds of things. And I'm in Thanksgiving of what's happening now, what I know is coming, not so much of, you know, cause when we, when we give thanks at Thanksgiving, right, we're giving things, thanks for the past year, right? But why not right now? Mm-hmm. Why not in the future? Right? So yeah. that spirit says, oh yeah, she already knows that she deserves this. Here it is. Now you can have it. Right? right. Yeah. So I love that point. I, I love the praise part because it's it makes you feel good. By making you feel good, you lift your energy. You lift it right to God. And then anything can happen at that point. Yeah. So one of his quotes, he says, praise opens the gates of heaven and the doors of blessings. Mm. And he does have a whole section where he talks about self-praise because a lot of us can praise everything else, but not ourselves. Right. Um, and that's really, really important to have that. It, you know, that Thanksgiving part that Rita's talking about. I would, kind of wish yeah. I had heard this when I was younger because I love the whole point. Uh, because when I went through my my personal transition away from uh, the Christian church, one of my reasons that I gave to the people who were involved in the church was, um, you know, this whole thing is about praising God. Why does God need to be praised? And they couldn't give me a good answer. I'm right. thinking, wow, wouldn't it have been great if I had had this answer when I was 14 years old? I mean, that right. that would have exactly. been life changing just knowing that. Right. A hundred percent. Like it yeah. doesn't affect, doesn't influence how God feels about you. Right. God loves you no matter what. Right. right? So the praise is for you to lift yourself up, not so much to lift him, her up, you know, it, exactly. however you want to. However you want to uh, look at that energy. It makes so, so much more sense. It makes tremendous sense that way. Because, of course, yep. we're the ones who need to lift ourselves up. We're the ones who need to get into the high vibe place, as we call it. You That's know? it. And we automatically, by doing that, draw all the good to us. Mm-hmm. Automatically. It's like he describes it as this is law. This isn't you can't break the law. You know what I mean? Like if you break the law, it's not going to happen that way. This is why sometimes people repeat mistakes you know or or things in their lives or um you know there's patterns in their lives because they haven't been able to change them yet when they follow this the law those patterns get broken new ones get made ones that are better for you make sense and i like the way you phrase it that you can't not that you shouldn't but that you can't no because even when you think you're breaking it you're not breaking it. You're just drawing in the stuff you didn't want. It's just, That's right. You, you can't avoid it. It's just not possible right. to avoid it. <laughs> so uh, get on so, the other side of it so that you can bring the good right. stuff. <laughs> well, here's two, here's two things he says about that is, is your God a God of tears, of grief and anguish and pain? Question mark, right? Uh, no, God is the giver of joy and peace and happiness and love. Right. You can only get what you expect for the unchanging law is ever working to supply you. Prayer should not be, this is where some people get stuck, right? Prayer yeah. should not be one of supplic, uh, supplication, pleading, begging, entreating a sad state. It should be one of claiming, declaring, decreeing, praising, and a joyful thanksgiving. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, I know, I know for me, like, the old-timer, old-timer Italian women anyway, that yeah. I know, the aunt, my mom, the aunts, you know, they, they pray from this place of, anguish and sadness and they will and help these people and and please and you know like it all yeah. comes from this very they mean well but yes. they do it from this place of the wrong vibe it's just right. not gonna happen it's not it's not that high vibe that it's not praise it's it's complaining basically right right yeah. this all kind of reminds me of something that i picked up fairly early on in my self-education about the law of attraction 
which was the idea. And, and this isn't something that I actually heard from a particular teacher. I just kind of pieced it together based on what various teachers had said. Mm -hmm. But one of the, the themes that runs through a lot of Christian circles is God always answers all prayers. It's just that sometimes the answer is no. And what I realized when I listened to the LOA teachers is that actually isn't correct. The answer, the, the answer is always yes. The question is, what did you ask for? That's right. That's right. We kind of, we kind of skipped that part. <laughs> and sometimes you don't even know, like, because you're running on a program of some sort, you don't even know sometimes that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like an automatic oh. thing and you have to think and be very aware. Like he says, you've got to be very aware of the thoughts. And eventually it starts, they start to, the, the old negative thoughts start to just kind of absorb in the new positive. Mm -hmm. And then that, that way of life is done. Now we're in a new place, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I just think it, it, I, I believe that when you put that out there, that praise, you leave yourself open like a magnet. You st just start to attract good things to you. Yeah. So, ahead, so he's, I'll, I'll read another little bit that talk, that's exactly what we're talking about. So, you know, which is, of course, because we're talking about his book, right? But anyway, <laughs> right. <laughs> it says, uh, though we may not sense it or fully understand it, our thoughts are moving continually in, in this invisible ether, and they are either increasing or diminishing in power and intelligence. When we praise the riches and opulence of God, the law, our thoughts are greatly increased in the mental atmosphere. The increase affects our being in that it reflects in everything out in our mind and in our, that are, and everything that our hands may touch. If we're contra contracting our thoughts through fear, criticism, and complaint, we reflect that contraction and our results are either delayed or frozen. Mm. That's huge. Yeah. Because people, they don't realize when something's not happening, they always, even we do this, we always think it's coming from the outside. Yes. We never think to go in and say, what am I doing to make this halt, stop? What am I not ready for? You know, kind of thing. Because even noticing that can change it, mm -hmm. right? But if we start blaming everybody around us, right. we're never going to be able to get to that point. The other piece I love is that when you praise yourself, you praise, you know, when we are praised or we praise ourselves, the cells in our body react to that. Mm -hmm. I love that because this is, this is really important to understand because this is how self healing happens. Yes. You can change the cells in your body by praising yourself, by talking good about yourself, by others praising you. The cells react. They know what's going on. That's how, I don't know, I, I can't even call it smart. What's, what's more of a... Innate, innate, intelligent. Yeah, it's just there's an intelligence there that it, it, it goes beyond even, you know, how we can think about it. But it just knows. Well, because the body, the body has consciousness too. Right. So, exactly. you know, when we can include our body, because we, we forget to include our body in everything. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to do, I say trying because I'm still working on it. I'll forget and I have to remind myself. Wait, hold on. I'm checking with my body. You can talk right. to your body about anything because it's the thing you, you travel with, right? That's right. You can't yeah. get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stay here. Good. Right. Um, so you guys have a story. The okay. funny thing about the body, too, is that if you think about it this way, it's like having an army of trillions on your side because we have trillions of cells. Yes. Yeah. You have, you have yeah. trillions and trillions working on your behalf, and all you have to do is give the direction. Right. And, That's and right. something, I think, I don't know where I saw this. I heard this on something in the past few days. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it was the book. I don't think it was, but maybe Rita will remember. You know, our bodies, supposedly, and they are, the cells are changing every seven years, right? But yes. why are we recreating the same thing or if you have these problems in your body and your body can regenerate why are those not going away it's because you're not changing this stuff up here right and you're not praising that like you know oh you're like so angry you've got this problem with your knees i hate my knees blah, blah, blah. i mean listen to the talk that people listen to what people say about the things that are going wrong in their body how does the body feel that has consciousness when all you do is put it down 
That's right. Mm -hmm. How can it change? How can it have its cells change into Regenerate. something new? If you don't open the doorway or the magic, right? Talks about magic. I'll take my magic wand out. <laughs> um, <laughs> To, to move into a different a different vibration or to hold a different story because we keep feeding it the same crappy story so those cells are going to keep giving us that same crappy story and right. i feel it's because we don't think we're empowered enough to do it we we gave our power to this being that we call god and we have not addressed that we are that you know enough where we believe that we are that god that we can do the same thing right that it does okay so but if we saw it and you know we've we've had so many so many um things outside of us that we could see not us but maybe like when we talk to a plant that looks like it's you know not doing well and we talk kind to it and we talk nice to it and we we build up the energy around it all of a sudden the plant comes back to life yeah. Right. So there is a story about a car, a guy in his car. Yeah. Um, but I'll just say the way I, I healed my rotator cuff and that was like the doorway opening me to get into healing. Gradually that came about, but I healed it through just sending this energy, this essence, this feeling of love into the shoulder. So yes. I did two months. Boom. I almost had the surgery, but I had this message. I can heal myself. And that's what I did. Right. That's so. The cells were like, okay, I'll get on board with that. Mm -hmm. That sounds good to That's me. That's it. It's that <laughs> yeah. belief. It's yeah. that belief that you can do it. So, seeing it. Remember we talked about that last week. Yeah. 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 So here's the story about the car. He says, one man told me that while driving, he heard a clicking noise develop in the rear of his car. He talked to his machine and praised it to get him home safely and without delay. He drove some 30 miles and rolled into the driveway safely. When he tried to move the car further, he discovered a broken axle. But he got him home with the broken yeah. axle anyway. Um, a woman wrote him stating that she was weary looking at an old carpet that had seen better days and had given good service. She tried the praise method and began to speak kindly to the old rug. Within a few days... She had word that a brand new carpet was on its way from Colorado. And that same week, she received three smaller rugs equally as new. Wow. Her husband, upon seeing the contrast with the new floor coverings, decided hurriedly that they must have a new suite of furniture. So all in all, the law worked. And by praising the old rug, she has a newly furnished living room. <laughs> <laughs> So whether the changes are inanimate things or in individuals, it matters not so long as the desired results are obtained, the law works without discrimination. That's right. That's, that's great that the law works without discrimination. That is perfect. It's like, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. If you practice it the right way, it works. If you don't, it works. <laughs> yeah, and if you practice it in a negative way, it works. It works. It That's just what I'm works. saying, yeah. <laughs> it's equal That's opportunity it. abundance is what it is. That's right. Which is very yep. cool. You know, people say, um, you know, say to me sometimes, it's so hard for me to think positive when there's so much adversity. And, I, you know, the beautiful piece that he writes about is that praise generates confidence. It strengthens your faith that builds assurance for you. Keep praising it, even in adversity. Keep praising it because it's going to shift. Mm -hmm. It's going to shift no matter what. I uh, was yeah. telling you before we came on the show today, Rita, how I uh, had gone shopping and I wasn't really looking forward to going into the stores with the right, right. gear and the masks and all that kind of stuff. Um, but by the same token, on my way to the store, I was doing exactly what you were talking about. I was putting in my mind and getting excited about really feeling how great it's going to be when we get back to where we were before, where nobody wears a mask into a store. Everybody's, you know, they're smiling because now like, oh, we don't have to wear masks anymore. How great is this? And, you know, right. nobody's concerned about getting sick. They're all feeling so much better about their, their, their own self-confidence, about what's going on in their lives. Everybody feels like, oh yeah, we're, we're in good health. It, it's an entirely different vibe. And yeah. I did that knowing that I might not 
see that when I was in the store today, but it didn't matter because I was putting out something that was going to be powerful and was going to in in some way help people that I couldn't even see. Right. Absolutely. That's, that was perfect to go in like that, you know? It helped me too, by the way. Made yeah, a lot easier because to go you weren't, right, you weren't crazy yeah. about going in, so you lifted exactly. your own spirit to do it. In fact, interesting, uh, my perception was the shopping went quicker. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and in the past few weeks, it seemed like the shopping was dragging on and on because of all that fear that was there. So it did right. cut through to me in a way that I didn't really kind of expect in advance. Well, no surprise that it happened right before this show. Yeah, right. So that you could share it. <laughs> right? That's true. Did you guys see that meme? Kind of like the namaste, you know, the light within me sees sees the light within you. But it was like the mask within me protects the mask, uh, helps the mask within you. I don't know, something. Anybody see that? I didn't that see one? it. Didn't see no. <laughs> That's cute. No. Yeah. Hey, b- before we move on um, to the next chapter, uh, uh, Joseph sure. actually typed some questions in here that are uh, somewhat related, and I, I think she's actually doing some research. She actually uses our show to inspire herself with uh, the poetry that she writes, which I think is really oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. But anyway, uh, she says, first of all, have you heard of the theory about us being spiritual descendants from the divine feminine Sophia? I listened to a couple of Gaia TV talks about that. What's the name? Sophia. Sophia. No, I haven't. I haven't heard that. Um, okay. I mean, I've you know, there's been many, um, many of the feminine energies like Mary Magdalene, the Blessed Mother, mm-hmm. uh, who have done initiations and um, have been able to um, uplift the feminine energy. And there's a lot of that now happening where. Um, more of the feminine energy is coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, But I haven't heard Sophia, no. Okay. And then for both of you, she asked, and this is a question she asked on uh, Wednesday. Cindy had heard of of this person. She said, have either of you read anything by Gary Zukav? She says, I've been on a Zukav kick the past few weeks. She read Seat of the Soul and Heart of the Soul and now listening to Soul to Soul. So are you great Zukav fans? Yeah, he's great. Yeah, I love his stuff, you know. Um, he's, he's like, um, how would I describe? I like his, for me, he's very endearing. Um, you know, his writing. She says he talks about all being students of the earth school, which she agreed with. Yeah. That's what this is. He wrote Seed of the Soul, like quite a while ago. And he was on Oprah. I I think they talk about them beginning of the book. Um, when nobody was really out in the in the public talking as much about this when his stuff right. came out so that, that was pretty interesting i yeah, i enjoyed the seat of the soul i didn't i didn't read the other ones yeah he's he's a, a pioneer and you know in in this kind of stuff so he's he's got great yeah great stuff if anybody's interested in reading um, and likes to read his stuff is and it's it's enjoyable and it's understandable it's it's something mm-hmm. you can you know connect to for sure it's not out there out there you yeah. know that's the mark of a good author, somebody who can really break it down into terms that are just everyday conversation rather than something that comes exactly. out. Exactly. You know, Where someone can't program. really. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a big deal. Oh, um, something else, too, I wanted to mention wow. about the law of increase. Um, yes. What we've been talking about. I mentioned this in one of the earlier shows, actually two of the earlier shows wow. this week, um, how, I, I mean, you, you even alluded to this last week, Rita. At one point you were talking about money supply and how um, as money supply increases, it affects pricing and all this kind of stuff. Um, right. And I had realized, I, I've talked about this before, that the 2009 um, banks that were big, too, too big to fail um, had basically trans- transitioned in a new paradigm because for the first time in economic history, a monetization of debt, in other words, an uh, increase of the money supply by creating debt, by basically the, the, the Fed buying back the, the quote bad debt from the banks that were too big to fail had gone into the economy without any kind of, of pushback, like in the form of a, a bond market crash or a stock market crash or an inflation or, you know, some kind of a negative event. For the first time, the market said, yeah, OK, we're all right, all right with that. Mm-hmm. And I've been thinking about that lately and thinking in terms of the of the law of increase. 
One thing that I've really been noticing is the law of supply and demand has always been about this balance between supply and demand. But in the last 10 to 20 years, actually maybe 20 to 30 years, largely tied to the development of technology, there has been a gigantic increase, particularly in services, but also in goods. There's, there's like this abundant supply of stuff that's out there. Mm-hmm. And that actually kind of terrifies economists because they're concerned that when the supply gets too big and the prices start to come down and then they say, well, now you're going into a recession. But I look at that and I say, that sounds awfully like abundance to me. Mm. And so when you're That's talking about the law of increase, I'm thinking, you know, we live in a society where that is, we, we, it's kind of like we passed a tipping point, you know, mm. beyond which, like, there, there's no going back. It's not like there's going to be this big crash where all of a sudden stuff stops being produced. In fact, right. stuff being produced in massive amounts, you know, overabundance. It's like everybody, everybody's becoming an entrepreneur these days, right? That wasn't see, true see. 20 years ago, but all of a sudden, all this entrepreneurship bouncing around all over the place. And, right. And that's just going to continue. So. To me, that's just another indication of this law of increase. It's out there. We just have to pay attention. You have to tap into it like everything else. You have to tap into it and know that, um, you know, they may, you may think, oh my God, I can't get paper towel. I can't get toilet paper. I can't get the, yes, you can. Yeah. You can, you can put that energy out there. We found it. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? It's a matter of putting the energy out there, knowing that there's enough of everything. That's right. That They may tell you that there's not. Because they're looking to scare you, but that's just not the truth. And even Maybe your experience may tell you that. You you see the, the, the shelves empty. Like, so your experience right. is telling you, no, there's, there's a shortage, there's a shortage. Well, Louise and I went out on one of the days where there was this big shortage and we needed some of the stuff that was there. We got it. It, yeah. it, it, it was in actually the first place we went to. <laughs> it was pretty yep. wild. <laughs> yep. You know, with, find that, it. what you were just saying with people, um, it, it's almost like people are – realizing and stepping more into their power and starting to follow their true desires. And that's why more and more of these types of businesses are coming about that no one, no one would have thought about earlier, oh. especially the younger kids who are coming in and creating these huge empires right. on, on something that you would never have thought you could make a business out of like YouTube videos while I'm riding my motorcycle, <laughs> you yes. know, some of these yeah. have like, you know, a million followers and they're promoting all kinds of stuff, you know, but, Really, what they're doing is just giving some their joy to other people to watch. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of different things like that. People building houses. You're watching the whole thing all the way through. Um, people are using their creati- They're using their creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which That's is something. coming back to your truth and your power, and, and, That's right. and letting that grow into something. And, right. and there's something for everybody. I mean, my wife found something when she told me about it, my eyes practically rolled like really you're enjoying this but she was loving it apparently somebody has put together a television show that follows a crew around that clears storm drains you know when when a, a street fills up with water because the drains full they clear the drain and and the whole point apparently is to watch them clear the train so you can see the whirlpool as the water flows it down into the grate and clears the street <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I maybe on some level, entertainment, but you know, <laughs> maybe on some level it's an energy healing because you're letting your junk go down that drain with that. Why not? <laughs> See ya. <laughs> she's actually a fan. She's she's watching like well, four or five episodes of it. I'm thinking, oh right. my goodness, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, there's so so many different things on now that you can watch. The other day I was watching a show where they were making candy, like you know, like um, they show you the machine and how they make they were making taffy and. This and that and how they, I mean, from beginning to end, I was very fascinated sitting there watching. I'm like, wow, that's how they make taffy, you know, <laughs> but it, I was just enjoying it, you know, in the moment. It was, it was good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, on to the law of uh, compensation, right? Yeah. Yes. We all know, we, we, we want that one. That's like the money issue, right? So we all want to get the answer. I think it's all connected. I think they're all connected somehow. Um, in every way to your health, your wealth, mm. you know, it, it, it just, um, this, this principle seems to be, um, uh, you know, connected to progress, growth, development, evolution, without the law of compensation, we would not be able to have those things. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And the key again is your thought process. That's the bottom line. It, you know, if you know that you have a habit that, um, you don't like or you're obsessed with it or it possesses and it, you you know that you're not the master of your own life 
That's the mm-hmm. bottom line, right? So you have to look at that. That includes smoking, whatever, whatever, overeating, um, undereating. I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. It's a habit, right? So <clears throat> if that is in control of you, then you are not the master of yourself at that point. So you need to change your vision. You need to change your thought process for it to begin to change. And it, it takes time. Like people think they, you know, I think a lot of people think, oh, I don't understand. I, you know, it's been two weeks. Nothing, nothing really changed. Yeah. It took you a lifetime to get here. You know what I mean? Like two weeks, two (laughs) weeks. That's like a spit in the bucket. Like, you know, (laughs) have some patience, you know, because you're, this is not an easy, nobody said it was easy, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be easy. It should be enjoyable. Mm. Enjoy it, whatever it is. Yeah. Even if you have to do it for the next three months, enjoy it. Right. Yeah, so, he said he talks about how this law is a law that is truly those who help them. Um, how does he say it? Um, the law helps those who helps themselves. Yeah, the law helps those who help themselves. And and basically, he's talking about really what we're saying, just changing those thoughts even a little bit. Like and it's another place he talks about how success comes through those changes you make in your thoughts. Of course, right? right? Of course. Um, and not to put blame out. It's like when things aren't going right, a lot of people tend to want to throw blame out there. But, you know, oh, yeah. everybody, I think, listening to this show knows everything's a mirror. You know, whatever's going on out there is really a reflection of what's going on in here. So mm-hmm. you always have to come back to you, you know, or even ask the questions. How can I change this? What can I do that will make or what what is great about this that I'm not seeing that I can then piggyback on that energy of the positive side of whatever the situation is? Because there's always right. going to be some kind of positive side. Right. There's positive sides to this whole thing that's going on right now. Okay. Oh my god! Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I, but and we could either we could either think about that, or we could think about all the nonsense that the media is trying to have you believe, where the world's coming to an end. It's like, what do you right. want? What, what do you choose to? Which, what do you, where choose, you choose to, to put believe? your energy? Right. Exactly. And I tell people, you know, right? Just write all the stuff in your life that's great right now. Mm. Just write it all down. Stop praising it, because. You watch the change like immediately when that happens. And, and and sometimes you have to write it down to really see, you know, and feel what you're writing. Um, some people just thinking isn't enough. They need to see it. They need to needs to come in several different forms, which that's fine, you know. But if well, you I think you're right. I mean thinking isn't enough. You do have to feel it. And I think yeah. that's probably the biggest uh, mistake that people make, even when yes. they try. They, they're all, they're only abstractly thinking about it. Okay, I've had this thought in my head. There it is. But there's no connection here. Yeah. That's the thing. Exactly. You know, they go, oh, I just have to think good thoughts. Okay. But there's no heart connection to it. And that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. yeah. I like and think I think he it. goes, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I think he goes on to say, too, if there's unpleasant things coming up in, in your ex- environment, in your existence, then there's part of parts of you that are lying dormant or are totally neglected that you aren't bringing up and out because really we're abundant, right. Right? right? So, and again, it goes back to let's praise the things that are good, right? Stop focusing our thoughts because it's so easy to get ra- wrapped up in that web of thoughts of how everything can go wrong. Sure. Why not take that power that because we can do that like this? Let's just flip it and do that on the positive side. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I do like the point he makes about competition. Uh, I am not that person. Like I don't, I, I believe there's enough to go around for everybody. Even if I had 10 psychics on this block, I know that enough people, there's enough people in the world that would be calling me and all 10 other psychics to, we'd all have enough businesses. What I'm saying, nobody mm-hmm. would have to compete with each other. Nobody would have to be like, Oh my God, this person's going to take all my, I, I firmly believe that when you when you put that energy out there of competitiveness that you want to undercut somebody or take what they have away, you bring you unleash something on yourself that's not pretty. And exactly. and it ends up always coming to bite you in the ass. So well, you have to right, you have to understand that even if you had this podcast and 10 of the people had similar podcasts, you're going to get a million listeners anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. Because if you put the energy out there, you're getting them. You know, and there is a story, if I remember, I could try and find it, but where he's talking about some guy who is starting a business, he was competing with these other businesses on the same street or whatever. And he was doing from that energy of having to outdo them 
and he grew his business. Some of them went out of business, but within two years, he crashed and his business closed because he didn't have the right energy to really feed that business. He had the energy to annihilate everybody else. Annihilate them, that competitive energy. They have, yeah. So that got uh, him there, but he couldn't stay there. Right. He He couldn't sustain him. Yeah. It couldn't sustain him. Yeah, because they, um, a great quote from the book is, one cannot build upon the substance or the virtue that another has created. You can mm-hmm. only build upon your own. That's true. So it, it's going to, you know, it, it, and I'm sure this man, uh, you know, had to learn a great lesson. Some some people will learn from that and others will be the martyrs and the victims. And, oh, my God, you know, everybody's against me and that kind of thing. So hopefully he learned and, and you know, he's in a better place. It's very much like what, what, what Linda said a moment ago about uh, people who cast blame. Yeah. It's really the blame comes right back on yourself. You just don't necessarily notice it. People who blame actually usually don't notice it. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't keep doing it. But the same thing holds true with what you're talking about here with that competitiveness. Um, yeah. I found in my own life, because um, I've done a number of different businesses, those businesses that I've gone into where I wanted to defeat the competition were the ones that failed. Yeah. The ones that succeeded were the ones where I didn't even think about the competition. Right. I mean, it, it just didn't even occur to me. It wasn't right. part of the thought process at all. So, yeah, I, I 100% echo what you're saying because that's been my experience. I yeah. think you can have a good energy in competition, though, and then it would be good because it's not like you're trying to annihilate. Maybe you're learning and growing and giving ideas. Out. Like I can know a ton of coaches that did something that worked really well. Oh, wow, that's great. I'm going to build on that, too. But, but you know, it's a whole different energy. Yeah. Um, but, but even with sports, because I know with, through my karate his career, with other people, we had this this fun kind of a competition where we were both both. I'm just thinking of one person where everybody's growing together, right? Through that spirit of competition, but it's not like we're trying to outdo the other one or make them less. We want to make them more. It makes us more. That's right. Well, that's there's there's a difference in the energy. That's that's totally. I don't even know if I would call a competition. Then it's you know it's it's cohesive yeah, it gets, energy. It gets you know, funny because with sports, they will call that competition. Competition, like, you know, yeah. Karate tournaments, it's competition, right? Yeah. But it depends on how, if you come from it, like you have to kill those people. <laughs> right. You're probably not going to go very far because your energy is just wrong. So I'm just right. saying if you go from that high energy where we're all lifting each other up through this competition of, I mean, because karate, it's a chess game. You know, you're trying yeah. to outsmart the other person. Yeah. Not yeah. like you want to humiliate them. You want to you want to outsmart them. <laughs> you know? That's yeah, I mean, Yankee, new- I've been a Yankee fan most of my life. And, of course, the Yankees and the Red Sox are well known for that, you know, heated rivalry, rivalry. Had for decades. Yeah. Interesting factoid about uh, the Yankees-Red Sox rivalry. There are a number of fans on both sides that are just quite too predictive. They're just you know, mean-spirited about the competitive aspect, and they're always down – you know, bad mouthing and downplaying the other side and so forth. And then there are the players. The players go out in the field, they compete, and then they go out to dinner with each other. Red Sox yeah. players go out with the Yankee players. You know, right. that's the good kind of competition. Right. That's the and kind. And they all wear masks, out. and they're all sitting six feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just yeah, because they don't great. want to be recognized when they're in public. That's all that is. <laughs> I, I think that's fantastic. You know, you see that at the end of any game, they'll they'll you know hug each other or. Uh, shake hands they'll say something nice to each other good sportsmanship you know good sportsmanship it's important you can't you can't always win you're not going to always lose you know and there's always something to learn anyway when you lose Mm -hmm. as it as there's always something to learn when you win um but yeah even in our linda even in our um you know our uh, realm right i've i mean i've given out some people that I know that someone else would benefit from. I've given so many people like not to say I can't help them, but if I get a hit that one of my colleagues can help them, I'm not going to, I'm not going to deprive them of that. I'm oh gonna, yeah. You know, I do I mean? the same thing. I send people, I, some of the people I, that come to me, I send them to more people than myself. Of course, <laughs> yeah. of course, whatever could help, you know, yeah. whatever can help. But you notice that when we do that, it it builds it builds this energy of love, of respect, of you know consistent. Um, I I notice more and more 
you know, I'll get more and more people coming when, when you do things like that. You don't, be, you don't even have to think about it. It just happens, you know, because you have that person's best interest. Right. You know, right. So when you're always, when you're coming from that energy of love, of course, that's what's going to come back. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. As opposed to that competition. Oh, I can't send them there because that person might be better than me and then they'll never come back to me. But that's a whole different way of thinking, right? But again, that's that that's that not being able to praise yourself, not being able to say you're good enough or it's how you feel about you, really. Right. I, and I, I had to learn true. that, you know, I, well, we'll talk about that another time. But right. It, we'll it talk is about a reflection because that, that fear of not being good enough then would keep you from not wanting to send them to somebody else. That's right. right. Rather than it's like, hey, listen. They can do a better job than me right now. I, I feel like this person will support you better. That's or their particular about. modality, it, they have something in that modality that you feel that this person could right. benefit from. Like right. I, I'm, I cannot do shamanism, right? Because I'm not trained in that. But I, I have someone that does it. She's also psychic, right? <laughs> now I could, I could say, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to send that person there because, you know. God forbid, then they do a reading and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, it doesn't work right. like that. Right. You know, you always get what you need wherever you go. Right. And it only go that way if you're in that, if you're carrying that lower vibe. If you're carrying but when you're that. in this energy of love, you can't help but to give the best you can to whoever is in front of you. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's uh, that, that general space of being fearful of others is just that it's fear. I mean, that's it. it. We, we talk about, oh, we're being competitive. Oh, I don't want to send somebody to my competitor. But we're really just afraid when we're in that space. Yeah. And when we understand it that way, to me anyway, that says to me, oh, my God, that's something I want to stay away from. Because I know whenever I'm in that low vibration place, which I gener- generically call the fear place. Right. That's, that kind of covers the whole range of negative emotions, just calling it fear. Well, Absolutely. that's where all the things go wrong. That's yeah. where I get the opposite of what I'm looking for. That's where I get the, the right. stuff I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> And God knows the amount of energy you use by using that fear. Oh, you know what I mean? Like yes. you use so much more energy when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it depletes you. It really does. Yeah. So no I, I highlighted something here. I'll read it because I think it ties into the part we're talking about now. And uh, Rita, maybe you can take it to where, sure. where it takes you. So he says, you must earn what you receive or you cannot keep it. Mm-hmm. If an individual appears to do so, it will not continue. It will not continue. For in accordance with the law of compensation, the person will find his true place. Or as a popularly expressed quote, like water, he will find his true level. Or you mm-hmm. can't keep a good man down. In truth, the only bar to your advancement is your own unfitness. In other words, he who more than fills his present place will sooner or later be advanced. Mm-hmm. Were it not for this principle, there could be no progress, no growth, no development, no evolution. So really, that's holding, that's knowing your value, holding your place. And then, but if you come from this lower energy of lack, it's kind of what we're just talking about. What what do you get, Rita? Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think you can have, you know, you're, you become stuck and um, like it, it talks about not being able to evolve. Well, the whole idea of coming to this earth is to evolve. Right. We're in a big school here learning how to evolve. Right. So we can stay stuck. We can choose to stay stuck in one place and not move because of fear. Or we can choose to say, you know what, I'm going to take a step, even if it's one step, because it says God helps those who helps themselves. One step forward and you watch all the help will come from spirit, from around you. It's just, it's a, it's an, it's the law. It's an automatic thing. Right. And I like how this flows because the thing I'm reading while you're saying that is to blame your difficulty on outer conditions or on other people is not correct. It is not the law. It is you who are wrong. The law is not wrong. <laughs> no. The law will do what it does. Your interpretation of the law. Right. Yeah. It's your interpretation of it. And, and, you know, um, again, it can be the way you were raised you know, uh, uh, belief systems that were given to you, you, you have to, at some point, you have to discover who you are, regardless of where you were raised or who instilled right. what in you. Right. Uh, I isn't love the last Go ahead. Go ahead, Wolf. Isn't it funny how we, we can get into that space and we forget how to climb out of it? Yeah. Because it's so easy, right? I mean, we have so many influences that kind of drive us to the negative vibe place by default. And then we get there. 
And then we say, well, I don't know how I got there, but how do I get out of this? I mean, I feel miserable. I can't, nothing's manifesting the way I want it to. Nothing's working out the way. I, it all feels terrible. What do I do? Yeah. That's where, it, I mean, you have to have a strategy. I think you have to have something that you can kind of fall back on as like your, your go-to. I mean, do you have a go-to mm -hmm. that you, you, you know, well, Linda, you were talking earlier about how um, you were having kind of a down week. What was your go-to to climb out of that? Meditating and, and healing and doing energy work on myself. <laughs> That's mm. right. That mm -hmm. will yeah. always, even just sitting and just calling in the light and allowing yourself to feel that energy come in and wash through your whole, you know, I just like to let it wash through me, send the lower energies down into the earth and then expand that energy out. Mm -hmm. And then in that space, when I can feel my energy so expanded, then I just talk to, you know, whatever you want to call that energy that is out there. And, and I, and I do healing work. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's really good. By I the way, I want, to, I want to recognize, recognize somebody else who's uh, posted in the uh, live stream. This is somebody sure. who I, we don't see often in the live stream. I'm glad he's here. His name is Daniel. Um, and I'll share first what he wrote. He, he said in, in regard to what we were talking about earlier, he said, I once heard that the origin of the word competition means to struggle together or to strive together, which I thought was a very Yes, to strive is the part we like. <laughs> yeah, I like and, it. And it's yeah. really good. But I or also want to recognize him for something to else. Because Daniel is also a member of our Pivot Pals group, which is associated with the show. And one of the things we've been doing in that group was it's kind of fallen off in many ways. A lot of people aren't doing it anymore. But we were using it as a place to focus on stuff we want to manifest and going in on a daily basis and uh, you know, revisiting and getting into the space of, of reimagining whatever the little vignette is that we're trying to, to make come true. Daniel has been the most dedicated person in that group. And yesterday... He, he goes in every single day and he comments on his original vignette saying, okay, I'm, I'm focusing on it again. I'm doing it again. Yesterday was day 100 for him. He's been doing it wow. for 100 straight wow. days. Good for wow. you. <laughs> so God congratulations, bless. Daniel. I mean, you are the champion right now of Pivot Pals. I mean, you're doing so good <laughs> with that. That's great. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe this is a good segue for this next part of the book we, we could talk about. Sure. It talks about this thing, first, second, and third. And I'm just going to put the initial thoughts on that. And he, he writes about each one of these. But so the first thing that you consider is, do you expect something for nothing? Mm -hmm. Second, are you a bargain hunter? Mm -hmm. I love it. And, mm -hmm. and the third one is, do you begrudge spending money or paying your bills? Yeah. Well, you got to look at the energy behind those three. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I know. Listen. Question, we all know someone that, you know, how you go out with friends on a consistent basis. You always know there's, you know, there may be one of those people. I know, I know them um, that, you know, they, they don't want to pay for anything. They'll either eat off your plate or somehow they go to the bathroom when the bill comes because they don't want to be, you know, they're takers. Right. So I think we, we all know somebody or have known in the past, somebody like that. Um, yeah, I, I'm a firm believer of you You pay for what's yours. You pay your way in life. That's that's just the way it is. Well, well, even the bargain hunting thing, I think the way he talks about it here, too, is when you're trying to get something for nothing and you're, you maybe you're, you're ripping off, sometimes people don't consider what it might take for that business to actually put that product out or what it, you know, maybe they only make two cents on the damn product anyway and you want to try and save five or whatever where now that guy's losing three who's actually giving you that service like you got to look at that some way when you want to get something for nothing or you know because bargain everybody loves bargains but to right. what degree like are right. you are, are you doing this from an energy like you know that store is they're they, they're loaded and they're ripping me off anyway so how can i rip them off by whatever you know right right think yeah. about that you know, like when when um I mean, I've gone back to stores because they didn't charge me for something because I didn't want to have that on my energy that I got this thing. For, oh, you know, 100%. That, that cashier might be the one or who knows what that has to put that money out for me. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Whereas some Absolutely. people are like, oh, screw them. That was their <laughs> mistake. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. it's the energy behind that, because what are you promoting then? Then you're in alignment with being cheated. So what's going to happen in your life? You'll get cheated. Yeah. And I know what that Absolutely. one feels like. I've been there. I've had yep. definitely, I've had painful experiences with that, and it's not really? a good vibrational place to be in. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. 
Good. And Good. yeah, the last one is um, about paying your bills. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a, that was an eye opener. Um, How do you say it? I, got, I got excited today about paying bills after ah, reading. It. Okay. Yeah. I, I've, I've actually learned that one quite a while ago. So I'm always when I'm putting the money out, even if yeah. it's hard, it's like, no, OK, I'm, I'm changing the energy around that. Yeah. 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 Today was like, what an eye opener. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy paying my bills from now on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Right. The other thing I've and learned then, about bill paying, particularly I, I I really applied this a few years ago when we were in desperate financial straits, really bad. Um, and it was based on a recommendation from one of my co-hosts, and I can't remember which one it was. It may have been Cindy. I'm not sure. Uh, but I made it a practice as soon as the bill came in to pay it, not let it sit around. Because right. what happened was if, if I let it sit around, there was an energy associated with the unpaid bill. Yeah. That's kind of built over time. Right. Whereas when I paid the bill right away and even tried on occasion to do like you were just saying, to actually build a positive energy about it, I ended up feeling entirely different about it. I mean, the financial situation immediately didn't change, but the way right. I felt about it changed. And sure. that created a longer term shift that did change over time. It has improved substantially over time. Yeah. Just, because, just from doing that one little activity. Yeah. So I have a question for both of you and, and whoever's listening. Does anybody... Um, think about that when they don't have money, they don't have a lot of money, right? And But they freely give to a charity, even though they don't have a lot. But then when they have money or they've come into some money, they tend to hold back in giving. <laughs> Has anybody experienced that? You mean not give more when you have more? Right. Uh, no, I've I seen haven't. this. I've seen it. So that's why I'm asking. I, that's not familiar to me. I can't say I've experienced that or even heard I'd, about I'd that. That's an interesting phenomenon. In What's that? That's an interesting phenomenon. I hadn't heard of that one. Yeah. Um, so and, and I, is that I, because I, is that because they think that if they give even the smallest amount that they have, it'll bring more to them. But then when they get the more, they're stopping the program. Right. They they maybe it feels like kind of like you know I've I've done this. I've gone to. I've get, I've gone to the casino, right? And I put out a, a you know, I'm I'm winning a thousand dollars tonight. I put a limit on it, right? Mm. Because that was my comfort level, mm -hmm. right? I if I thought, oh, I'm gonna win ten grand tonight, and I really had that energy in there, I would have won ten grand, mm -hmm. right? But I put out the energy of a grand, and I won it. Okay, so by me putting that limit. Because I was afraid to ask for more because I thought, man, nah, I'm never going to get 10 grand, but I'll get, I'll get a grand, you know, by me putting that limit got me that exactly what I asked for, <laughs> but it, it didn't, what, what my purpose is, it didn't set up the energy for me. Like, oh, that means I could ask for more. It was mm. like, I got what I asked for, but that was it. It kind of like was dead after that. See, I did I, so I had to learn from that and say, no, no, I have to keep my energy open to be able to receive more when I go. Right. It's kind of like Abraham, that. right? It, it takes no different energy to create a button or a castle. It's yeah. the same right. amount of it's energy. It's all energy. energy. So, yeah. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. the it's the thought in the head that says, uh, there's no way that's not going to happen. Well, then it won't. You're reminding and, um, me of a co-host who well, used to be on the show about three years ago, I think it was. His name was David Bartke. And David, every single week, would come in with another story about how he went to the casino and won. And it was like week after week, every single week. Yeah. He was going to the casino and winning. And very often the stories were along the lines of what you're talking about, that he would hope to do at least this much. And he would get at least that much. And then it would just keep coming and coming and coming and coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Love you know that. I, I'm going to read this story. And it has to do with a guy turning $10 into thousands. Ooh, okay, yeah. I like that. Yeah. So it says, often when we get to a low level, we begin to tighten up on our purse strings. We begin to hold back. This is like closing the faucet, limiting the supply from pouring into you. I remember a man telling me of a time when he had an urgent need for $1,000. He had put $10 bill in his purse, and he was holding onto that bill like a drowning man to a straw. For days, he said he, ca he carried it about with him 
afraid to spend it in fear of being broke. Suddenly occurred to him that he was pinning his faith more on the $10 than he was on the true source of supply. He was closing this faucet with the mere $10 bill. It had grown to become a fearful obstruction. When he realized this truth, he sat down at once and he mailed the bill to a nearby church. And following the release of that bill, supply began to flow into him. Before that week was out, he received his $1,000, enough to pay for the month's obligations. And he added, never since has supply failed to flow to me, for I learned my lesson. It's so holding on to it so tight, right? Mm-hmm. And so that was limit. So it's like $1,000. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. One more. It's yeah. doable, right? <laughs> but no, you got you got to be able to think more. You and know? that brings in the faith, right? Okay, I'm going to let my last $10 go out. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you get. You guys were talking earlier about what I call keeping score, where you're constantly checking to see has the results shown up yet. Has right. It appeared. Oh, it hasn't appeared yet. Oh God. Why? When is it going to appear? Why hasn't it appeared? And that keeping score energy is is a low energy vibe. It's not a good feeling vibe. And so of course you're just putting up resistance without intending to, just because you're keeping score. Whereas right. when you just kind of let it go and say, you know, screw the score. Who cares what the score is? It's just right. going to, you know, it'll come when it comes and I'm just going to enjoy it. That's when it shows up quickly. It's amazing. Huh? And, and in big ways too. I mean, yep. you were talking, I, I love the story that you just uh, shared there from the book, Linda. It kind of reminded me of a manifestation that occurred to me last year with money where I, I was going through one of these things where you, you try to uh, attract $10 and then 20 and then 40 and 80 and you just keep doubling it. And I was up around two or $300 and I kind of forgot what I was doing. And the next thing I knew, thirty thousand dollars came into my life. It's like, whoa, what was that? <laughs> right? Oh my God, that's phenomenal. It was yeah. crazy. <laughs> and, and how many people have you known that were out of work and you know, and they didn't have a job and they were fretting about this or where's this work going to come? And then finally, you get to they get to a point where I guess they give it up, and then they mm-hmm. get like a job offer and another job offer and then three more. I mean, yeah, they surrendered it. Yeah, that surrender. And I've seen that with people I know, and it's like, okay, I, I, I've seen it proved. <laughs> you know, like it right. totally works. Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, our friend Daniel Mangana, I, I think I mentioned this last week, he did a five day um, challenge last October with a whole bunch of people just doing the kind of thing I was just describing. And he said 80% of them were manifesting between $100 and $1,000. 80%. And there were like 50 people, 60 people involved in this challenge. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's unbelievable. There's but it's power in numbers. <laughs> there is, yes. <laughs> There's, There's power, power in faith. Experience. There's power in faith. Power Absolutely. Faith. But, you know, when you have like-minded people around you and you have that energy that builds, you know, good energy, it, it affects everybody. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Awesome. I guess awesome. Awesome. Part two. Awesome. Thank you so much. The best part was yeah. the stories that came along where he um, – uh, was he was kind of tracking the stories that the people were telling, and, and it would be things like, you know, somebody would come up to them on the street and hand them the money, you know, that kind of stuff, just like really out of the blue kind of craziness. Right, you know, right. You, you get it, you get it going, and then all of a sudden, everybody else starts picking up and doing the same kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun stuff. Hey, fun you know, you, you mentioned earlier uh, how um, it, it's valuable to you know feed a lead to somebody else who you might have thought of as a competitor, but. You know, you know, the other person can take care of it better and so forth. And it reminded me of something that I, I had been doing for quite some time, but I haven't done lately. So I'm going to do it with you ladies right now. I want you to tell listeners how people can reach out to you in case they want to reach out to you for your services. Okay. Linda, go, babe. Lovemylife.coach. You can find out anything you need to know about me on my website, the different things I offer. You can hook to my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, it's all there. Easy okay. peasy. Cool. Yep. Um, you can reach me at spaceofgracehealing.com or you can just email me at spaceofgracehealing uh, at gmail.com. And uh, everything, yeah, everything is on the website. Or if you need to ask a question, you can just reach out that way. That's fabulous. And we got one last comment from Jeffrey. Jeffrey says, thank you for the show today. It definitely spoke to where I am vibrationally. I am encouraged to start using the skills and tools and gifts to raise. I love it. That's awesome. awesome. 
So thank you, ladies. Thank you, live streamers. Thank and you. especially thank you to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.